Okay, well we will be in Matthew 6, so if you want to open up there. There's a story that was awfully familiar to the early church because it scared everybody. You know, a good scary story is a great way to illustrate a lesson. Especially if you are actually concerned about what's going to happen to you. Matter of fact, it is recorded in Acts that the result of that story was that there was great fear among everyone. And then there was worship. But the moment was one that we kind of record, we kind of expect, we are a little bit cynical. But when you look at the actual story, you think, why in the world did those people do that? The fact of the matter was, they'd grown up watching it. They'd grown up watching it. They'd grown up watching giving be a celebration of self, not the one being given to. They had seen it give particular status over and over and over again as they grew up. Hearing the ringing sound of the money being given. And because of that, when they began to be a part of the new sect, the Christians, as they would later be called, at this point in time, they were simply the followers of Christ, followers of the way. This couple had a frame of reference that was out of kilter. Their frame of reference was one of status. It was one of the priests and the, the rich givers constantly being recognized. And so when people started giving property to the new church as it was being formed and becoming known, the, the ecclesia, the gathering of believers, they saw someone give. Now this man had the gift of giving. He didn't give like the priests had given, but he was recognized by everyone for having done it. So when they saw that, it made some sense in the back of the head. We should give, but why? For us, the story of Ananias and Sapphira is a cautionary tale. This couple had seen this kind of giving their whole lives, and so when they gave to the Lord and they gave to the church, they sold their piece of property. But why did they sell it? They wanted something out of it. And the wrong motivation gave way to rationalization. And they rationalized, it's ours. We, should, we need to hold back part of this. We want certain things. So let's only give part. But, you know, it really, because of what we're doing, we'll just tell them we're giving it all. Because we want people to recognize the sacrifice that we're making. Who knows exactly what the thoughts were in their heads. But we know that when they brought the money before the apostles, they laid it at the disciples' feet, and they said, this is all of it. And it started with the husband. He brought it. And Peter said to him, why has Satan filled your heart to cause you to lie to God? You're not just lying to us. The wrong motivation gave way to rationalization, and that gave way to deception. They deceived themselves first, and then they deceived or tried to deceive the apostles. The problem was God wasn't amused by this. He was establishing something wholly new, and the motivation that was so out of kilter, that was so focused on self, was going to be punished. 
And Ananias says, we know if you've read the story, fell dead right then and there. His wife came in and Peter asked her, is this how much you sold it for? It wasn't about the price. It wasn't about the stuff. Her answer, well, yes, of course it was. His answer, the feet of those who just buried your husband are at the door and they'll bury you too. It wasn't Peter's condemnation of her. He just knew what God was about to do. And she went down too. What an interesting day in the church. Fear spread on everybody. Why? Because God wasn't going to put up with the old way of doing things. He wasn't going to put up with the motivation of self in his church. He was going to establish something wholly new on a whole different attitude. It wasn't that, as Peter said to Ananias when he was having his discussion with him, he said, it wasn't that the property wasn't yours. It was yours to do with what you wanted. When you sold it, was not all the money yours. It's the lie. And I pay special attention to what they had seen growing up. Because when we approach Matthew 6, and we start in verse 1, Jesus makes a statement that frames that whole situation. He said this, Be careful not to display your righteousness merely to be seen by people. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Thus, whenever you do charitable giving, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and on streets so that people will praise them. I tell you the truth, they have their reward. But when you do your giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your gift may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. There was a definite little piece of history here that Jesus uses as an example that we don't understand unless we look back just a little bit. Be careful not to display your righteousness merely to be seen by people. Now remember true righteousness is rightness with God. It's not our perfection. But people looked at it as their perfection. The people in the Jewish society had grown up used to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, the priests, those in high religious position displaying their righteousness, their level of perfection, so to speak. One of the reasons that I have issue with a Catholic sort of setup in the church is because of the stratification of believers that comes so easily with the idea of this person being a stronger Christian or more removed from the world and it goes up the ladder. You start with the, the poor peon in the pew, so to speak, and then you go to the priest and then you go to the monk and then you go to the bishop and then you go to the cardinal and then you go to the pope. Someone who's called his holiness. Well, we are not holy. Our holiness comes from God. Our rightness with God comes from him. Our righteousness comes from him. But in this world, we tend to try to display our own level of righteousness. And that was the problem with the Jewish religious leaders when Jesus came. And what he says here is, if you display that, you'll get the reward for it. If your level of perfection is what you're busy showing to everybody because you're displaying to them what you want them to see, that's the reward you'll get. You'll get the reward of people admiring that. You'll get the reward of people talking about that. And that's all you'll get. You don't have a reward with your Father in heaven. So then he says, now you guys, when you do charitable giving, give differently than what you've seen your whole lives. And then I, since Sapphira, had grown up watching this. 
as someone would come to do charitable giving, especially in the temple area, the giving box was shaped in a certain shape. And it made a noise. It was shaped like a trumpet. And it rang when you dumped your money in. And everybody could see it. So when he says, don't blow a trumpet, he's not talking about actually picking up your trumpet and walking down the street and blowing it as you approach the giving box. He's talking about making it obvious. As you approach it, do you, uh, you know, drop it all at once so it makes one huge crashing sound? Or do you just drop one at a time so it just keeps on ringing? Like a, you know, like a slot machine in Vegas. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> of course, a couple times I put a quarter in the slot machine, it usually has gone thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> But nevertheless, what happens? It attracts you, right? The sound. You walk through the airport in Vegas. I love the Vegas airport. It's the only airport you can walk through and gamble in between planes. So you can lose your money for your hotel that night while you're waiting for your next plane. It's awesome, isn't it? But here the clanging was the sound of acting. When he uses the word hypocrites, remember he is not using the word that we use now. Hypocrite means a false, fake person now in our dictionary. Hypocrites, hypocrite, was an actor. It was someone on the stage who shifted masks because of the way that they did acting in the day where they would change faces. So when he was talking about hypocrites, he didn't use a loaded term like we have now. He was bringing a new one into place that talked about the fact that don't act as those who are two-faced who are faking it. It was a new concept in a way. Don't be like an actor on a stage and let everybody know. Why? It's a, it's a matter of motivation. God wanted his early church to be pure. He wanted his early church to be motivated by their love for each other, by their love for him. He wanted something new and different. And he was shifting the way people thought. Jesus started out giving that explanation here. You know, he says they, they blow the trumpet. Ding, ding, ding. They're out on the streets so that people will praise them. They're doing things in front of everyone. I will admit a weakness for Seinfeld episodes. One in particular in which George who in the story that begins with George ends in disaster, wants to be noticed. He tips the, the person at the calzone place and they have their back to him and they don't see him tip them. And over and over again, he tries to tip them so that they will notice because he doesn't like the bad looks he's getting. So he eventually, in order to be recognized, purposely tries to drop it right in front of them because he's got a display for them that he's a good tipper. Of course, he drops it in while their back is turned and he sees that, so he reaches into the jar to pull it back out, to drop it back in again and gets caught with his hand in the jar. <laughs> Isn't that the way it works? The Lord is not impressed by us doing things so that we can be seen and recognized. I am always worried when I sit down in a church and I hear a sermon and the pastor is telling you what he did right that week. Because let me tell you, I have a whole lot more examples of what I did wrong this week. How many times have I got caught with my hand in the jar trying to show off? I tell you the truth, he says. 
they have their reward. But when you do your giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So now he takes a Jewish teaching method. Jesus was fond of using this method. It was a common method amongst rabbis at the time. He makes a very extreme statement. So in order to illustrate something, they take the extremes and flip them on their head. So is it possible for us to not let our left hand know what our right is doing? Same brain controls both hands. It's not a physically possible thing, but he's illustrating a point. So his listeners would have understood what he's saying here. When you do your giving, do it quietly. Now, you can take in secret to an extreme level. You know, it, it, we've had times where people have given to us anonymously. We've been able to do the same. It's kind of fun, you know, kind of neat. But, you know, you, you can do it. You can take it to an extreme. You can put on the ski mask and sneak in. And, you know, in Wyoming, it's a good way to get shot. You can try to drop it ever so quietly. Or you can just do it carefully. Do it quietly. Jesus isn't saying put on the mask, tiptoe in the back door. He's saying do it carefully. Do it quietly. Don't do it about you. And your father who sees that will take care of the reward. Again, are we doing it for the reward? Ideally not. And in essence, if I were following on the act of Barnabas where he simply gave, he sold a piece of property, he gave the money to the church, he wanted it to take care of widows, he wanted it to take care of others within the church who needed care. The father saw it. Other people happened to see it, and so it became this thing, and then we had our whole situation unfold. But here, your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. The same thing happens when we come to prayer. Jesus continues and he says, whenever you pray, don't be like these two-faced actors. Don't be switching faces behind the curtain and then coming out on stage. Because they love to pray while standing in the synagogues and on street corners, convenient places where they would stop. Now, remember, it usually starts with a poor motivation. They want to be recognized. Then it comes to rationalization. Who are these hypocrites he's talking about? Usually the leaders. I want to be a good example. So being a good example means that I'm going to pray on the street corner so that everyone will see me. The problem is, it's not about the God you're praying to, it's about you. It's about me when I'm angling for something from the Lord. So then Jesus, again, uses this extreme example, right? He's not saying don't pray in public ever. Though I know there are some that would love that command. Because some of us are more public than others. That's fine. It's the way God wired you. It's the way God wired me. I like to be up front, but there's also a problem with that because I've got to be careful because it can't be about me. What he says here is whenever you, in verse 6, pray, go into your room. He used the same phrase, by the way, just a moment ago. Again, these people have their reward. Their reward for their prayer is not answered prayer. It's not miracles. It's not a relationship that's closer with God. It's they got the recognition they wanted from the people. But that's all they're going to get. He says, whenever you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Again, the same pattern. When you pray, do not babble repetitiously like the Gentiles, because they think that by their many words they will be heard. Repeating the same thing over and over again. I've seen film of folks worshiping rocking back and forth, repeating the same thing 
over and over again in the hopes that their dedication will be heard by the God they're speaking to. Our God answers prayers we don't even know to pray. Our God loves us through the hardest of times, and He answers prayers that we don't even know. His plan is better even when we don't see it. He's not a God who glories in making us work to get his attention. He's not a God who glories in making us do things in order to make him happy. He's a God who glories in relationship. And what Jesus says here is, do your prayers because of your relationship with God. Do your prayers. Yes, there's a place for public prayer, but do your prayers where you're not doing it to get recognized by someone else. And don't just repeat the same words over and over again. This is a relationship with your father. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask. So pray this way. And next week we'll start on the Lord's Prayer. It is far too much to just lump it in with this stuff today, but Jesus gives important things, things that had become public displays rather than private worship. Giving was worship. When we give our money, we show where our heart is. How we give our money is just as much a part of showing how, where our heart is. You know, we always joke, you know, we want to give so that our name is on a pew. Well, we don't have pews. Do you get a brick in the new church because you got your name, because you gave enough? You know, I haven't been rich in this life, so, you know, I'll probably get a brick behind the toilet. <laughs> this tile paid for it by John. <laughs> Someone with lots of wealth gets the cornerstone of the church, right? And God help you if you ever redecorate that room. <laughs> because that is dedicated to Aunt Ethel. Just remember, why? Why do we give? What is it that we're doing? We're worshiping the Lord. We're cementing and growing in our relationship with him. Why do we pray? Why does it matter? Why does the Lord's Prayer that we're going to go through later matter? Because it's a pattern. It's not a magical formula for getting what I want out of the goodie box. It's a pattern for my relationship with the Lord. And that is what giving is. That is what praying is. It's worship. It's relationship. So be careful. Be careful when you are associating with people that you associate with those who give because they love. They give because they love the Lord. They give because they love others. Be careful that you associate with those who pray because they love. They love the Lord. And they love others. Prayer is an important thing. And I would encourage you. You know, we, we give from what we have. Giving is important. We don't talk a lot about it here because for me, giving is a very personal aspect of worship. It's something that I would encourage you, you know, whether you tithe to this church or not, giving is a personal act. It's something you choose to do based on your relationship with the Lord. But don't forget that Jesus did talk about money a lot. Why? Because it was where people put their treasure that their hearts were. So do you give? Do you give to those in need? Do you give to missionaries? Do you give to the church as you feel led? It's an important question. The reason we have a bucket in the back is because we don't want to ring the trumpet. 
We don't want to embarrass anyone. We don't want people to think that's what we're focused on because it's not. What we want to be focused on is what does the Lord want? How do we have a good relationship with him? How do you use your treasure? That will tell you personally a lot about where your relationship is with him. How you give and what you do. Prayer. We pray publicly. We pray together. We encourage you to pray on your own. Because publicly we can support each other and we can unite in prayer before the Lord. The early church did. Privately. Because it's about your relationship with the Lord. Remember that. It's about you and your relationship with the Lord. It's about Him. It's about worshiping Him. And when Jesus is giving this sermon on all these different things in Matthew, as he is giving them this list of things that he's been going through, the blessings, the fulfillment of the law, anger, adultery, marriage, divorce, oaths, retaliating, loving, giving, praying, He's talking about a whole different mindset. That the church should be something completely different. Christians, we ought to be something completely different. Let me ask you and challenge myself, what is our motivation? Because if we have the wrong motivation, we'll start to rationalize things and then we'll deceive ourselves and then we'll try to deceive others. We'll put up a face. We'll switch masks. One thing I do love, in large part, people are people, so it's the same everywhere in some ways, but in large part, one thing I love about Wyoming is you usually know where you stand with people. <laughs> you laugh because it is true. You know, there's, there's some truth there. We've been in places where people will speak kindly to your face and stab you in the back, and we've been in places where people will tell you how it is. I prefer people who tell me how it is. Don't let yourself be deceived. Don't deceive yourself and try to deceive others. Again, it's about your relationship with the Lord. What does your worship look like?